All right, guys, before I get started, don't cheat and don't look at anybody else's guesses, okay? Pick a number in your head. How much do you think we spent? Drop it in the comments below. We finally have comments on this channel again, so let's take advantage of it. All right. Let's get into it. As you guys probably know, me and my family of four now live in this school bus house. Everybody's at the park right now playing so that I can get this video done. Thanks for going to the park for me. Subscribe and hit the bell if you want to keep watching. Bye. So it's just me and Nala. Nala, say hi. Thanks, Nala. That was exciting. So this past winter, we completed our second bus conversion. It is a 2000 Bluebird transit bus that used to be a university shuttle bus for Katie and Sam. Last time I made a video like this, it was about Gilligan Phantom. I basically told you about every single expense that we had so that you would understand exactly how much money might flow out of your pockets if you're gonna do a similar bus conversion of your own. But this time I'm gonna take a slightly different approach. This is more of a professional bus builders take. So assume that a bus just landed in your lap and you got to work on it. And this is mostly the material costs. And to do that, I have this great bus build expense spreadsheet, which I have been dutifully working on for you guys. You are totally welcome to open this spreadsheet and follow along. It is a Google Drive document and it is linked in the description below. You can see every little thing that we bought for the bus as well as where to buy it from. All right, so let's talk about this bus. We actually saw it at publicsurplus.com, which is a public auction site for government agencies and private agencies to sell their used vehicles and items. We did not bid on this bus because turns out it had a cracked axle housing. In fact, all of the Bluebird rear engine transit buses from this fleet had cracked axle housings. And we didn't bother to take the time to research that, especially because the bus was all the way in California and we were all the way in Florida. However, we probably should have because somebody bought this bus at auction, knew it was not that big of a deal, and drove it to New Mexico before deciding to list it on Facebook Marketplace place and sell it for a bit of a profit. So we picked up this bus for $7,000, drove it back to Florida, had a bit of a breakdown, had a bit of a repair. And then all we actually had to do for that cracked axle housing was send it to a diesel repair shop and they welded that crack shut. And we expect to get many more years of service out of that axle housing. And if we had to, in the future, we could replace it. So to buy the bus, fly out to get it, spend a bunch of fuel to get it back, repair it, install a tow hitch package on a Honda Element, as well as a tow bar, as well as a tow hitch on the bus. And oh yeah, six brand new tires. We actually spent $17,050 on the acquisition and road preparations for this bus. That is a lot of money. And I'm going to delete that now from the spreadsheet because I don't want it to muddy the waters too much. You can definitely find a cheaper bus closer to you with less problems and probably tires with some life left on them. However, I don't think it's crazy to spend ten dollars to $15,000 to get the bus that's perfect for you. These buses, when new, probably cost like $150,000. they have been fleet maintained. They should be in serviceable condition for as many miles as you're probably going to put on it. So spending 10% of that, not that crazy. When I was building Gilligan Phantom, I estimated that I spent about a thousand hours working on the bus. Turns out that might have been fairly accurate because for this bus conversion between Sam and myself, we spent about 900 hours. Two thirds of that was done by me. About a third of that was done by Sam. This is all hypothetical, of course, but if you paid us $25 an hour for that work, which I think if you pick up or have the DIY skills necessary to do that work, you are absolutely worth that much money. It would cost $22,500. Now, if you're paying somebody professionally and they don't have a ton of overhead, but probably they do have insurance and they do have experience, I would expect to pay up to $50 an hour. And if I was paying a shop which had employees, a whole bunch of overhead, I would probably expect to pay $85 to $100 an hour at least for that work. If you do the math on those two numbers, you will find that a bus conversion can be quite expensive. I think you should buy a bus and convert it yourself. That's what we're into here. Having said that, let's delete the labor expenses from this spreadsheet. And now everything is going to be just materials from this point forward. Okay, so first up we have demolition and floor repair. The first thing you're gonna do when you get your bus is gut the heck out of it. You're gonna have to buy some tools, which I'm not including here. But besides that, there's really not that many expenses. I do think that if you rip everything out of your bus and you mitigate the rust on your floor and you've repaired it if necessary, repaint it, and you get it ready for the conversion, you're not taking any value out of your bus. You're definitely adding value having done that work. If you keep going after this point, you realize later, this is too hard. I don't have the money to complete this. You might have some sunk costs in your bus build, but if you stop right here, you should be able to sell your bus for what you paid for it or even a little bit more, especially if you get a great bus. So for 
demolition and subfloor repair, we spent $340. It's the cheapest thing you're gonna do. It's one of the hardest things you're gonna do. And if you find it's not for you, cut your losses and run. If you go beyond this point, you better finish your bus and move into it because it's about to get crazy. Next up, we have what I call ceiling penetrations. I don't know why I call it that. It's things that you have to penetrate the ceiling for. I don't know, it still seems weird, but that's what I got. So in the ceiling, we took those hatches out, we covered them back up, we installed two max air fans, we painted the roof with an elastomeric paint, and then we installed full length solar roof racks. That all cost $1,115, okay, not bad. So the next thing we did is our subfloor and our furring. Basically, we're taking this raw metal bus and turning it into a raw metal bus with a wooden skeleton. You're gonna be using, if you do it the way that I do it, 15 or 25 PSI insulation on the floor, half inch to about two and a half inch, depending on what climate you're building your bus for, because I make buses that are basically warm weather chases and we don't wanna lose headroom and we don't wanna go through all the work of raising the roof. I tend to get just half inch insulation just to take the edge off of a cold floor on a cold day and then top it with subfloor. In our wild caravan, we made a bit of a mistake. We used a three quarter inch radiator of pine because we thought there was a chance we were gonna leave it as a finished floor. Turns out that did not work out. We wasted a little bit of money. We could have gotten a cheaper subfloor. I recommend a subfloor specific five eighths or three quarter inch plywood. For the furring strips, we used pine one by threes on the ceiling and we used ripped plywood on the walls. The reason we use ripped plywood on the walls is because we're going for this exposed plywood seam look and so for the furring strips and the subfloor we used $1,281. So now we've got our insulation. We went with Havelock wool insulation. I made a whole video about Havelock wool versus spray foam. You're welcome to check it out here or here. I think it's here, it might be here. We're very happy with that Havelock wool insulation. Spray foam's good too. It really depends what you're gonna be doing with the bus in my opinion. And if you're gonna be building a cold weather bus, spray foam is probably right for you. But if you're not, I think you will probably enjoy working with and installing Havelock wool insulation instead. Those are the two that I'm into. That and some three quarter inch poly iso to cover the windows we spent. $1,355. Next up, we've got our electrical rough-in. That's all the wires that go all through the bus. We use marine grade wire. It is expensive, but it is worth it because it provides the peace of mind you need to drive a rig for 100,000 miles knowing that you're not gonna have any solid copper wiring that might crack. The marine grade wire, as well as all of our puck lights and our dimmers and our AC and DC outlets and some other items, we spent about $1,355. Again, that's weird. So next up, we have our supply side plumbing. This is your water tank, water tank sensor, electric water heater, whole ton of valves, accumulator tank, 12 volt water pump. And also we use shark bite push to connect fittings. The reason that I use these is it takes plumbing from being a relatively intimidating item and turning it more into like just playing with Legos. I think that this is a good idea for you guys too, if you can stomach the expense, because it means that you can easily make repairs, you can learn as you go, and it makes plumbing just a lot easier. That being said, we spent like $600 on fittings and you can save several hundred dollars by going for a crimp connection or another type of PEX attaching system. For supply side plumbing, we spent $1,400 $44. Now that we've got our bus all roughed in, we've got our insulation, our wiring, some of that plumbing happened later, but the rough plumbing was done. Now we can cover everything in plywood. So to do that, we need a bunch of plywood and we use some special screws that look nice. And let's also throw in the polyurethane sealant that you're gonna use in the future to coat everything, make it look nice. And we spent on that $982. Moving along. Now we're gonna be building all of our interior walls. For this bus, I came up with something that I called Super Magic Schoolie Doors. This is basically a way to get sliding lateral doors to block off the front of the bus from the back of the bus, as well as the bathroom, because we chose to do a walk-through bathroom. I basically used heavy-duty drawer slides and essentially suspended plywood walls. The downside to that is it was quite expensive. We actually had to use 10 sheets of three-quarter inch plywood to make all of our walls. Then we used four more sheets to make our four doors. It just so happened that in order to get the width necessary for each of those things, we needed a whole sheet of plywood. But that plywood was used later in the rest of the build as we built the overhead storage and the various compartments. For Super Magic Schoolie doors and interior walls, we spent $1,330. Next up, we have heating and air conditioning. We went with a Pioneer mini split. We hung the condenser underneath the bus. 
and we mounted the head unit in the back of the bus so that you always have air conditioning in the bedroom as well as heat. Then we bought a diesel heater that we actually never installed. Did all the work ourselves except for the final connections and the pulling of a vacuum, which we outsourced for probably more than we should have paid. That came out to a grand total of $1,690. And you can of course see every specific item in the spreadsheet. Check out the spreadsheet, follow along. All right, now we've got our living room, our couches, our overhead storage, our various storage compartments. This is basically a bunch of plywood and a ton of hardware and some labor, but that's really all it is. The big ticket items are going to be getting an upholsterer to make your couch cushions and make your dinette cushions. If you can do that yourself, or you can figure out a pre-made product, you will save a lot of money here. But for this bus, we spent $2,450. Now for the floor, we used a pretty budget cork flooring and we just glued it down. That's really all you need, cork flooring and glue and some supplies. And that cost $269.42. Nice. In the bedroom, we've got some plywood for the shelves. We've got an insulated curtain in the back, the mattress, the bed frame, not too much going on back there. In the bedroom, we spent $940. Our kitchen is comprised of Ikea cabinets with custom made maple drawer fronts because we don't want the bus to look like it came out of Ikea. We want it to look special, like nobody's ever had these cabinets before, but we don't want to take all that time or expense to build our own cabinets. I don't see much purpose to it when you have such a big space to work in. We also got a really expensive DC refrigerator, but it is really nice to have that fridge under counter so you don't have to block up any of your visual space. We also got the only 110 volt wall oven that they have on the market. That was a pretty penny, but it was definitely something that Katie and Sam really wanted and it was a really nice item. We also went with luxurious quartz countertops, which might seem ridiculous, but I actually think it's definitely a go in a bus conversion. You really don't have to worry about the weight as long as you were getting a big diesel pusher like we are and uh, not like a shuttle bus or a bus on a van chassis, you can definitely pop in some luxurious quartz counters if you want to. Anyways, long story short, we spent $6,060 in the kitchen. That's pretty good. I mean, if you put a kitchen in a house, it's gonna cost you oh, 30, 40 grand. Who has money for it, you know? Just go live in a bus. So Sam built out his office. It was mostly two by twos and plywood and some hardware, a mounting arm for his monitor. And let's go ahead and chuck his monitor on there too, even though it's a little bit pricier because you need something to Netflix and chill with, right? So in his office, we spent $988. All right, guys, here's the big one, the electrical cabinet and the off-grid electric system. We built an all-electric bus. There is no propane, and so we need a robust lithium battery bank and as much solar power as we can fit on the roof. We put 3,200 watts of solar on the roof. We made a monster 10,000 plus kilowatt hour battery bank. We used the Lion Energy UT1300s again. This is my favorite battery from a reputable American company that has a lifetime warranty. These batteries you can expect to last for as long as you're going to use the bus for and if they don't you can call lion energy and get replacements so we installed those again they're pricey there are cheaper ways to do it but if you want to pay for that peace of mind i think this is the best value that you're going to get we also put in all victron components we use the 3000 va multi plus at 24 volts. We use a charge control that can handle all of those solar panels. We've got a Lynx distributor to connect all those components together as well as a ton of fuses, switches, and that all came out to $13,426. I've been estimating for a while now that it costs about twelve dollars to $15,000 to do a big off-grid system. Just so you guys know, you can go way cheaper. You don't have to go Victron. You don't have to go Lion Energy. But in the bus and van conversion world, we are really into these Victron components because they just work and they offer remote monitoring as well. It's nice to be able to know what's going on with your system off grid, you know, cause you rely on this stuff. Like this is how you live. So in the bathroom, we installed a Kildwick Easy Lou. We made a shower with a Curdy Schluter shower base and red guarded walls. We did a tile floor and then we used a faux cement to make basically a cement shower. That product did not crack at all. That worked out really well. It was actually quite cheap and easy. I definitely recommend it if you like that aesthetically. In the bathroom, we spent $1,646. That's a cheap bathroom. I mean, like a bathroom in a house is gonna cost like 15 grand, crazy. All right, in the closet, we took an Ikea dresser and we kind of hacked it in there. We bought a closet bowl. We got some storage baskets, some hangers. In the closet, we spent $252. For interior storage, we basically used all that leftover plywood and a bunch of hardware to make overhead and lower cabinets for Katie and Sam to put all their stuff in. Pretty much just the hardware we spent $134.
So this bus did not come with pass-through storage, which is awesome to have, but it's not gonna be on every bus. We went to Facebook Marketplace and we found some used undermount truck toolboxes. These ones were 60 inches long by 24 inches tall. We spent about $700 on those. And then we spent some more money hanging the gray water tank. So underneath the bus, we spent $1,445. All right, so now that brings us to waste plumbing. Basically, we've got the gray water tank. We've got a sensor to keep track of how full it is. We've got all of the PVC drains. We've got the HEPFO valves. We've got the sink traps. So for the waste plumbing, we spent $695. So just because we are sure that we missed some little things here and there, we have one last item, and that is a $1,000 of miscellaneous stuff that I don't even know what it is. And that brings us to the grand total of material cost for our wild caravan of $39,204. So what'd you guys think? Were you expecting us to spend about $40,000? Turns out when we were building out Gilligan Phantom, we spent a very similar amount of money on materials as well. So guys, check out this Google Docs in the description below. Feel free to share it with others. I really would have loved to have had this when I was building and that's why I've made it for you. And I would really love for people to get value out of this as well as they're building. If you would like one-on-one -on -one help from me with your bus conversion, you can find me at schoolysupport.com. Thank you guys so much for watching, viewing, and subscribing, and we will see you out there. Peace.